Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Something a little bit different, uh, a bit of a blast from the past for me. Um, many of you know I used to do commission work. I did it for 10 years before I ever got in front of the camera and did anything about showing you guys exactly how I work and what I get up to. Um, done a few little bits and pieces uh, and normally you see them as uh, video builds occasionally but really for the last certainly five years I haven't done any commission work whatsoever. Um, a little bit of a history lesson here, many of you know uh, many years ago when I first started this out which would have been sort of about 15 years ago I did a commission for many many models in fact 257 F18 148 scale Hornets the Hasegawa range uh, for a particular client of mine. Uh, biggest commission to date and it was a two-year project and lots of you asked about how do you do a big commission when it's multiples of the same thing? Um, you know, does it work like a factory? Is it like a conveyor belt system? Well, yes, basically. Anyway, um, one of our uh, friends on the site uh, is quite involved with the Big and Heel um, Air Festival. Uh, they've got the anniversary of the Red Arrows coming up quite soon. And basically Colin said to me, um, would you mind doing a few Hawks? Um, and at the time I was like, yeah, that's no problem. We, we can sort something out and everything else. Uh, and then it turns out it's 10 of them uh, for a sort of in-flight display. Now, normally when I take on a commission, there's lots of backwards and forwards and I design absolutely everything. This one's slightly different. All I'm doing is building 10 uh, Red Arrow Hawks, okay? They're all gonna be the same. They're all in 172nd scale. Um, I'll be putting them onto mounting bases, onto a mounting pole, which then they can mount on their own base and everything else like that. So my sole job for this type of thing is literally to build the Hawks, that's it. Um, a little bit different, as I said, and it's not going to be a full-on build on how to build a 172nd Red Arrows Hawk, because quite frankly, we've done that before, and it used to be on one of our older videos, which we actually don't have anymore, about putting it together and everything else. So we've sort of done it before, but I thought it'd be a good idea if I can show you in stages how I tackle um, building, how I put uh, multiples together, how I do, um, you know, basically a multiple thing. So if you're doing a run of anything over sort of two aircraft, it might be quite handy to see how I break it down, how I work it, you know, obviously I'm not going to build them one at a time because that'll take forever. Uh, certainly I'm going to just run through them in stages all together, then into paint and everything else. It doesn't take as long as you probably think. You know, if you're doing one aircraft, you're probably looking at between 12 and 20 hours to do one. Obviously, as I always say, to do two, you double it. To do three, it's the same as doing two, and then you sort of do the maths from that because obviously the time it takes having a tool in your hand from having paint knocked up and everything else. But what I thought we'd do, first of all, we'd start off with the kit. So this is the little Red Arrows 170 second scale. Um, as I say, I haven't looked in here, um, although I do know what the kit looks like, but certainly this is the Red Arrows boxing of it. Lovely little kit. It's one of the Airfix's new uh, range, if you like, uh, which go together. Quite frankly, the old stuff used to be horrible. Their new range of kits, uh, you might have seen recently on our basic video builds. I use all of those for those and also for the um, basic airbrushing videos. All now use the Airfix kits 170 second scale. So we did the Harrier, we painted it and everything else like that. Um, we did, uh, I've got to think what we did now, we did some Spitfires um, in different camo works and everything else. Um, and we did the, is it the Meteor? Not the Meteor, the other one, the Venom. Uh, as well, so absolutely lovely kits to work with. So in the bag you're going to get all bags together. If we start off with the main fuselage, as we now expect, it's recessed panel lining, which is absolutely great because that means it enables you to take a wash and things like that. Probably not with these so much, but definitely uh, if you're doing anything else. Very nice, very fine details, everything else. We've got no flash, no horribles. All the ejector pin marks do tend to be out of the way. Perhaps we've got a little lifted one just down in here, something we can take care of. But again, the control sticks are all very nice. You know, okay, it's a little bit heavy, um, but it's a scale effect. Spoke about this recently uh, with a couple of members we had over and we were saying about, you can only go so far with recessed panel lining um, because otherwise if it's too small, it's not even gonna hold a wash. You're gonna fill it up with paint. So they do have to be a certain size. Um, as you can see running down here, the flaps obviously molding in the up position, but you do have to put in the actual activators uh, onto the bottom. Some nice little detail down here in the wheel well, so you can actually see some stuff going down in there. It builds together very, very similar to any other Hawk kit. Certainly we've done the one for the 132nd with a Ravel one, um, probably our biggest obviously Hawk will build to date. Uh, generally, as you can see, very, very nice. We've got no, the ejector pins are all nice and flush, so it should go together. One piece gear, which is great for us because we can 
can put them just in, in one, uh, straight into it. So it can be done gear up or down. Again, looking through, we've got the actual the diesel pod, uh, which is gonna be underneath, obviously carries all the diesel, which makes the smoke uh, and everything else like that. Gear, not any interest to us, because we're not gonna worry about that. But again, quite nice detail for the scale and everything else. Uh, no problem with those at all. Looking through, these are those activators. You can see just down here, gonna go onto the wings. The intakes, two-piece intake system. Got some little bubbles, nodules in the mold there, but I don't think it's gonna be anywhere that's gonna affect anything. Just it's a shame they're the way they are. Don't know how well the cameras can pick this up. Maybe if I just zoom the side camera in, you might be able to get. It's these guys here. We've got some little nodules and things going on in there. Don't really like the look of that. Okay, again, usual thing. You might want to run a couple of swipes of a sounding stick uh, over this uh, jet pin mark on the rear side. It's such a clean fit with the top and bottom going on here. If this is slightly raised, it's gonna raise your entire area and put it out of sync. So we might want to look at that one. But generally, again, very, very nice. Cockpit tub, as you can imagine, is non-existent on 172nd. It's all a decal fit on these. A couple of nice little seats. We've got a little molded pushback area, which is quite nice. One thing I'm looking for, which you do get, we get the one pilot for this one, so he should fit in there quite nicely. Okay, so we'll move, push back into the seat a little bit. Again, you could add harnesses and various things if you wanted to. Quite nice detail down here, you might be able to see we've got a little bit of detail. Uh, we've got some raised riveting on the inside. Instrument panels are just blank, again, it's a decal. Okay, forward bulkhead for the gear. This is what the gear I do believe, if it's usually, they attach onto this that goes down, it gives them a little bit of strength. Um, we've got the scrape plate underneath and the air brake system just down here. Quite a nice touch again, very, very nice. Got ejector pin mark in there, might want to lose that if we're having it down and open, but generally not too bad at all. The cockpits, as you can see down here, not too bad. It's gonna be one of those things. We've got the petition plate just here, is very nice and clear. We'd expect it because it's flat. It's molded, one piece closed. Again, not a problem for us. We're quite happy to take that because it doesn't make any difference. We're gonna be closed up anyway. Um, the deck cord, um, this is the, the lines that you see running down on the clear parts just down here, uh, all the way through. This is a detonation cord that basically explodes if in there, it explodes so the crew, if can do, it can go through the canopy, all right? Um, it's, unfortunately, I was hoping it was gonna be recessed because if it's recessed, Easiest thing, I know it's a shameless plug, but if you take our light wash, literally come along with that, drop it in, let it dry, wipe it, done. It's a 30 second job. Unfortunately, this isn't, so we're gonna to have to work something out to get that round there to make it look a little bit realistic because it is very, very noticeable on there. In the usual thing, so we've got the Airfix Club, okay. We've got the decals. As the same, as you can see down here, we've got forward and rear instrument panels, the side panels again. All the markings as well for the red arrows, obviously the separate ones, we're gonna have to, so you're gonna to have to number them all up. A little bit of research gonna be needed here. Okay, and going through um, the round doors all in position and everything else like that, so that's quite nice. And the instructions, so we've got the usual blurb on the front, and to be honest, it shouldn't be too bad to put these together. As we were saying, painting the figure, cockpit going in, these decals for those, um, the tub, this is that forward bulk head we were talking about, which is obviously is what the nose will attach to, so it's a nice strong location point. Making sure obviously you get the jet pipe in, doesn't affect us either because we don't need any nose weight because we don't want any weight on it at all. It's gonna be on brass rod, okay, and going right the way up. Into the intakes, we have uh, a little, uh, it's gonna be a decal running onto the inside. It's the little white um, from the actual lines going through. And again, uh, parts all going on there. Uh, this is the rear can uh, combing that goes over the instrument panel. And obviously there's, they've got the clear glass part sheet comes down in between it. Again, ours is all gonna be closed up, so you won't really see it, although we're gonna have to put it in. Very easy two-piece wing system. Making sure you've got these in the right order, these activators for the actual flaps. Uh, unfortunately, you can't deploy them, but again, it's 172nd. Nasty area gonna be getting this right. Okay, this forward area, which you've got these air scoops going in uh, for the engine um, that sits on top here. Getting that right is a make or break because it's one of those there is gonna be seen. It's gonna be, everyone's gonna look at it. And obviously we're gonna have nine in a diamond formation with a tent somewhere else uh, and everything else. All important degrees, got 80 degree sweep. Uh, so it's just 10 degrees down. Uh, we've got the pitot tube on the front and the nose light system. Wing goes in. Okay, from our point of view, up underneath, we're gonna have the um, 
uh, air brake probably open on ours. I do believe we're going to do it. I'm going to have to check with our client over this. Uh, putting those in, gear not at all to us. It's quite handy because we're just going to be doing this bit. It's one piece gear in the closed position. Same on the nose as well, so we're not worried about that. Diesel tank going to go in, which is also going to provide extra stability. It's where we're going to drill through for our rod going down through there. Again, I need to work out with the client exactly what size he wants. And those all important markings on the back. So as you said, we're going to be picking out all the red arrows. So it'll be different markings all on the back of all of ours going right the way through uh, and trying to make it as nice and glossy and realistic and in scale as possibly you can do on something this small. So let's get all this cleared away, get some tools out and we're going to get start building. Okay, so we've unpacked everything and we've got all them done in sprue boxes, just like so. So actually what we've got is 10 lots of absolutely everything. This one here obviously we're not going to need for a while, it's got decals, clear glass, stuff like that and everything else, but we've got it pretty much laid out. Now one thing I learned really quickly is not to go around and cut everything off the sprue because you just never find it and then you end up with ones missing and stuff like that. So I tend to keep them all on the sprue as long as possible. But you have a look through the old instructions to see the easiest and fastest way of putting things together because it may be a case of look you can put the wings together they might need to have some filler work done um, putting the wheel wells in that's like that. that can be all left to one side and drying whilst you get on with other things for our point of view we've got a pilot we're going to have to paint we've got a cockpit we need to do uh, and things like that so over in the cockpit pile we have this guy we can probably get away with spraying this on board so what we're going to do is actually spray the color for the instrument panels obviously they're going to be blank the seats uh, the actual cockpit area and we can spray on the inside the insides of the cockpits things like that just to get them all ready before we move them to the sprue then we can touch them up before putting them in purely because we're dealing with just single parts like this instead of dealing with obviously instead of having 10 lots of fuselages like we got here we're going to end up with 20 and it's really easy to get confused this way you can come along and you know what colours are going to be so you can just literally take this sprue over to your spray bay inwardly spray all these areas okay won't take long big load of bulk paint doing the same same then obviously with things like the actual uh, uh, cockpit floor and sides we can get those all painted in one and then if you wanted to remove them from the actual system here from the sprues pop them into a box paint all the other bits black so you're all done like that and then we can just come in put the instrument panels in, get them decalled, everything else, then we're going to end up with, in, with technically 10 lots of cockpits all done. The actual bees, we then can remove off the sprue, then put them in and you can move on. And as they're drying and banded together, we can get on things like with the wheels and everything else we just go through. So that's the plan ahead, time to get on with it. Okay, catch up time. Uh, going pretty well, as you can see, we've got uh, a lot on the go. To start with, we've put the tubs together. To be honest, the forward bulkhead is a bit of a sod to get in there. Um, it doesn't fit very well. It would fit the other way, but you have to make sure it is the right way, otherwise it's sloping inwards. So to be honest, I nicked a little bit out of each one. As I say, it's the perks of doing multiples because you learn about it very quickly. Once you've done one, you think it doesn't fit. Second one, you try and improve it. Third one, you've got it right. Rest seven of them, no problem at all. Uh, so we've put in the control sticks, we've put in the instrument panels and everything, and it's been sprayed uh, grey. We've done grey and the inside of the uh, sides of the tubs. It's got ejector pin marks in here, you're not going to see them, so that's not a problem. So we've done all ten of those as well. At the same time, each of the gear uh, for the bottoms of the wings, we've put the gear doors in. It's just one piece that gets glued in, so as you can see, we've gone round and I've put them all in before I've removed them, even from the... The sprue which is we've done now so we've got the wing sex off sections on here we've got the uh, upper wing surfaces as I said each one this ejector pin mark just in the corner I've given it a little rub over in here just to make sure it's down and there's nothing raised up obviously you've got the sprue where attachment point here the one on the lead training edge we'll do all afterwards but this first one just make sure it is flush otherwise when you come to do this I put these together you'll notice it doesn't sit correctly and you'll have problems, problems getting it done on the front edge. So really that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do, put these wings onto here, then we can put those activators on there which will complete the wing section. We can leave that off to dry because obviously we need to sort of sand and take care of any of the points. As those are doing, then what we can get on with, we're going to put the intakes together and uh, the bottom diesel tank as well. We're gonna get those in, so that can all be drying. By then, these should all be perfectly dry, and then we can get in there and get the uh, decals mounted into them. Same time as well, I don't think I mentioned it, we've done the seats, wherever the seats are. Seats are all back here on the sprue. Sprayed them on the sprue, and I'll paint the uh, top 
boxes black as they are on the actual one. To be honest, for references, I'm using our Hawk uh, in 30 second scale that we did not so long ago. So literally it's just a small down version of doing this one, which is quite handy. Uh, so it's all gray on the seat, got some harnesses and that. I don't know if we're even gonna worry about harnesses because uh, obviously it's quite a lot to fiddle around with those depending on how time goes on. If I've got loads of time, we'll do them at the end. If we haven't, unfortunately, we'll be skipping it. But it's all going together quite well. We've been going now really around about uh, a couple of hours. We've got to this stage. We say we get these wing sections all done, should be okay then. And then what we can actually start doing is putting some more detail into these. The big point will be getting the fuselage halves together. When we get them buttoned up, we can look at exactly if we need any filler work or anything else around there, depending on how those go or depend on really how how this is going to go for time wise if it's going to be a filler job it will be a case of bite the bullet fill them all let it all totally dry come back refill because uh, it's going to need two coats of filler because obviously we're going to get shrinkage on these um, definitely to make sure because i don't want to have this to have lines in it uh, a couple of months down the line and things like that so it'll be a, a decent filler job on these uh, and we can push forward so on with the wings Okay, so um, where are we to now? Okay, cockpits all painted and done, as we know. Just about to start deckling on those. And for those, ugh, in box number five, okay, we've got all the decal sheets. So with these, as you can see, we've just done it gray, pretty standard, so very small. The cockpit, um, it's gonna be very, very basic. You're not gonna see much in there. We're gonna have the pilot figure in the front. We can do the control grip, things like that but a standard type of thing, this would be absolutely fine. So what we've got is both the instrument panels, so we'll take care of those. These are the side panels as well. We'll get those put on next. So a little bit of deckling work to do on those. So we'll get all 10 of those tubs done at the same time. We've completed the wing set now. So as I said, pinch glued them together. I've sanded off the leading edges and blended them in. Tell you what, Tamiya Extra Thin loves this plastic. Um, it just melts, grips, and dries instantly. Very, very nice. Um, I don't know what the formula is, but it is actually working a treat with this. We've put on the activators onto the back of the wing sets. They can now sit and dry, ready to go in. So as you said, we've done 10 of them as well. Points to put, put sort of point out at the moment. Um, this front uh, former, which the nose wheel goes to, now I know we're not having it, but we still need it, because technically it's part of the cockpit. Um, it doesn't go on very well at all. Uh, I shaved a little bit off going on there, so you need to do that. Um, the actual, the way that the wing fences go in as well, these activators go in. Make sure you sand up the base of them because there's a height difference, and if you leave a little bit out, it sticks up and rocks on there. They don't fit in there very well at all. Spend a little bit of time and do what I did, shaving every single one, so I've done 30. Um, actually, I've done 60 because it's three each side. Uh, takes them in, toll on the old fingers, all right? Um, the insides of the cockpit, so we spoke about, these are done as well. So whilst, once these have been decalled, they can be installed in here. Okay, and they're going to sit in something like this. All right, and they're gonna fit in. He says, trying to get them to sit in there a bit more nicely. Looks like there's a little bit of a bend issue on these. As I say, first time we've done it, I'm sure it shouldn't be quite as bent as that, but there we go. All right, but that leading one goes in the instrument panel. So what we'll do is we'll paint this combing on the top for the instrument panels separately before we install those. But as I said, next up, we've got to get this decaled. But these are drying now, so that's the great thing. And that's what we're saying about speeding this process up. We can put this to one side to dry, and then what I'm going to do is decal. Once the deckling is done, we're going to come back to bay number one for this box full. And in here, we've got the intakes in two halves, so we can glue those together. And we can do the diesel tanks um, the, for underneath uh, for them and get them glued up so they can be drying as we're then working on the next section. So as you can see what I'm doing here, it was a case of whilst these cockpit tubs were drying and the inside of these were all drying, got on and done the wings. Once they're done, we can move on to the next area as they're moved. So really there is no downtime which is what makes building something like this so speedy and doesn't take as long as you might think. And as I say, my formula is, if you're gonna do one, it's gonna take you, say, something like this, maybe 10 hours, okay? If you're gonna take do two, it's probably gonna take you 20 hours. To do three, it's only gonna take you 20 hours because by the time the third one, you're in a roll, you know exactly what you're doing, moving along, you've got the tool in your hand, doing these wing sets, for instance, by the time I cleaned up all the parts, coming along, it's just glue, bang, 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 wang them all in, doesn't take any longer. So really, as you say, if you're doing Two, probably you do three in the same amount of time. Same with spraying, because you're not gonna to need to knock up paint, you'll have it all on the go, it'll be in your hand. And also you get very quicker, because uh, you know what fits, what doesn't, where it doesn't fit, and why it doesn't, so you can make yourself along. So, I'm gonna get on with the deckling as my next port of call. As soon as we've done that, we can come back together, have a look, seat them to one side of the fuselage, get them glued in absolutely fine. 
And then what we can do is move on and say intakes, diesel tanks, get them sorted. Then we can bring it together because these will be in position by then. And as they're in together, we can work on things like pilots, the seats, getting those all in because they all need to go in uh, and sorting them out. So once they're done, then it'll be the wings fitted to the bottom, get the tailplanes on, the nozzles all in, everything else like that. So you're always moving along. There's always something to do. So anyway, a bit of inspiration over here. You've probably seen it. We've got our giant 132nd Revel Hawk, which is giving my color cues for everything so instead of having to go around I can just look in there and say right okay I know what color it has to be and work our way through that's why that one's there so join me again next up when we've done the decklin right okay nice jobs on these so we've done the cockpit which you know isn't anything you'd run home about it's pretty basic so we've painted the seats uh, we've done the cushions green we've done the header box for the uh, the actual chute in the parachute system on the seat that's done green as well uh, we've also painted all the hand grips black and say quite a straight job all the decals have been gone on we gave them a set of micro sole as well to make sure they settled down and went in all very nicely so that's those done so 10 of them so it's then 20 seats and that's the thing with this it's a long laborious job but as you get going with it little things you pick up simple thing you don't think about when you're doing one kit how to hold your parts okay as I said, classic examples, you know, you come along and you're holding your part and everything and trust me, by the time you've done five of them, you know exactly where to hold it, to put all those decals in without moving, changing your hand position, absolutely everything. How to lay the decals out so they come off the sheet easily, various bits and pieces, again, all saves time because by the time you've done the fifth one, five to ten, dot all straight forward. Any problems you have, like, to be honest, you know, it's not beat around the bush here, it's a 170 second, the decals are generic decals, they don't even fit the instrument panels properly or correctly, I don't think they even look very nice either, uh, but certainly from our point of view, it's good enough for what it's going to be. It's all going to be buttoned and closed up. The glass is very thick, you're never going to see in there, so we're not going to worry about it. But if you were doing this for yourself and at home and as a one off, you might want to play around with there in a little bit because, as I say, the instrument panels are nothing like you'd find on a 132nd, 148 even, as I said. But that's what we're talking. Other thing we've done, we've painted the inside black of the actual uh, instrument panel covers purely because when they're together, you can't paint it, otherwise you're likely to paint the inside of the dashboard or the instrument panel, and because that's gray uh, and not black, it will obviously bleed through and have lots and lots of troubles. And again, it's just one of those things, makes things quicker, easier, and faster to do. So we can now get all of these together, which is no mean feat, okay? I'll grab this one, which I think is a wet one, so we'll just be careful if I grab the other side we can put these in okay so you've got one area is going to go to the front here one to the rear immediately the first thing you notice when you put this in okay is the rear one isn't the same shape as the front one that is because you have to sort of push it in and squeeze it okay and get it to sit in the correct place okay so the bottom one is basically following the line if you like but the top back piece you can see at the back here has to go at the correct angle then you can grab some extra thin and for my case we're just doing three drops one at the rear one in the middle because that will capillary action will pull around and one at the front now again we're being very honest review here this front instrument bulkhead doesn't fit okay again it just pushes out if you hold it for a few seconds uh, and as we were saying before tamiya glue is working great on this styrene it absolutely loves it it destroys it um, but what it does do, it dries back extremely quick, quicker than other styrenes that have been melted. So whilst this styrene melts incredibly quickly with the glue, it literally, if you've got a thin bit, it will melt through it. What you can do is like this, hold it for a few seconds, it melts, goes very soft, okay? And that enables the part to conform better, push in a lot easier. But also, because it dries, you can let go of it and it's done, okay? And there we go, because if you tried that without it, it pops back out. All right, so that's our instrument in. Then we can grab the other side. Okay, and we can line these two up. So I've done basic clean out um, of the actual sprue parts as they sort of touch together and everything else, but I haven't done them totally. So once this is in, it takes a little bit of jostling around to get it all to sit in. And when it does, you'll notice it all goes in good. So then you can grab your bottom seam line and again plenty of glue with this don't scrimp on extra thin when you're putting it down nine times out of ten failed joints with sanding not enough glue okay probably eight out of ten reasons why they split open again not enough glue because sometimes you get pressures and you need to maneuver things around and if the seam busts open then you're in a world of hurt because obviously you've got to go around perhaps later on but again got a little joint down the back here this is 
to be honest, that little removed peg. But we're saying because this stuff eats up the, the plastic, it will melt it in and give a great finish with any luck. So like there, let's say giving it a squeeze, it's gone together nicely. And then make sure you come down to the inside of the tail because obviously it's a one piece tail with a seam down the middle. Nice, generous dollop in the middle there. Running down the back, okay. So again, we're just gonna hold for a few seconds. The capillary action will zip around everywhere and take care of all your joints, okay? Just don't get extra thin on your finger, especially when you're holding it because you end up with a fingerprint in there. And that is especially on this, because as I said, the plastic is so soft and melts so easy with Tamiya glue, you're gonna have problems. To be honest, I've just done it right there, okay? Again, won't be a problem, we can take that out. But for front instrument panel, we've got the black riding up. We'll just pop that in. Okay, down a little bit just down on the inside of the nose again we're holding then what we're going to do just to make sure we're all good under here going to put a peg to the rear uh, one to the front okay and that's it job done so got one here I just did just before we came on camera this is our other one let me move that before I tip it over Here's our little hawk, okay? So we've got a little bit of cleanup to do and everything else. So the easiest way is to let these totally go off before you attempt to sand it. Because if you sand them now, chances are it's just gonna roll up. But what we can do is have a quick look at fitting the uh, wing section just to see. So we've just got to remove the front and rear uh, sprue tabs. Don't over sand them because we don't wanna to make too much of a problem down there, but we wanna see how we're gonna look when we're all together. So again, don't push down on your seat. But there we go, that's gonna be our hawk, just down like that, okay, one down, nine to go. All right, doesn't look too bad, perhaps we might have to do a little bit of work of filler or something down in these wing roots, but certainly it's not as bad as I've seen in previous work. We've had worse, and as I say, it's quite nice because they're quite flat on the bottom, so you can just sort of look down them like this, and you can make sure your geometry is correct and everything else. But generally, pretty good, no problem. So what we're gonna do now is put the other eight of these together, okay? Get them all installed in there, get them buttoned up and looking good, okay? And then what we can actually do then is gonna come back and then we're gonna look at doing the actual intakes, get them sorted and positioned on and everything else, and we can get these centerline fuel tanks, okay? And then that's the last of the, the big joins, if you like, because then what can happen is we can leave it overnight, come back in the morning and do all the sanding uh, to see what seam lines we've got. Then after that, we can do a filler job on them all, give them a day to go off, come back, sand them down, get them in primer, and start to think about paint and making our way through the builds. So, pretty much getting there. Okay, so we're pushing on quite nicely. You can probably see down here, we've got some of the hawks done. Um, come across a little bit of a problem I thought I'd explain as we go right the way through. What it is, you've got this top uh, part is going to go right on the top here and sit in. Okay, now the first thing is a little bit of flash here, which you're not too worried about the flash because we take care of that afterwards. But what you do get is a very large step, okay, just on the side here, right? Now, really easy fix. What it is, is if you look down at the locating tabs to the rear, you can see that this bulkhead should be a little bit further back than it actually is. So two options, nudge it back like this, okay? And then grab your part and sit it on. Okay, you can still see it's very high on there, but the more you push this back, the more it sort of settles in and pushes in. The other way of doing it, of course, just to take a tiny little bit out of the top, and we're just about to lose that seat where we've pushed it around a bit. So all we're doing, just sanding off a little bit of the, the top here, okay? That will sit back and be quite happy. So what you can actually do is put that in, push that back a little. Now actually, this one is higher than all the others because the others have actually pushed down quite nicely. But this particular one, is it even higher for the rest? So we're just gonna come along and turn this guy down in height, just reducing the height a little, which will make us a nicer seat for this to go on. And it's a little bit of test and dry fitting like this. There we go, that's gonna go down just a little bit more on this side, that will make a lot of difference because it'll save us having to mess around uh, with filler, okay? And obviously, because we're doing a speed job here, it's all about time. So the less time we can spend messing around with fillers and that, they're better. So as you said, 
this one, to be honest, um, it wasn't prepped before. It's the worst one we found. All the others haven't been as bad as this. Okay, let's push that back. And now you can, might be able to see that fits down there really nicely. So what we're gonna do, just come along with our extra thin. Let that all go in there. And same on the other side. And again, beauty about this, it doesn't take long to go off, okay? So it'll probably do it even whilst we're holding it. But what I'll do is just shift my grip. So I'm gonna pop that seat back in. So I'll just put a little bit more down in there. Come along with this guy. Make sure he's in the right position. That's good. Okay, so we just put a little bit at the top. Capillary action goes round. Remember, if you've got a painted part like this, touch it with glue by all means. Just don't brush it. If you brush it, it's going to come away. Lots of problems. Okay, as we are holding this, we're a little bit stuck at the moment. You might be able to see on this one here over here, we've got the intakes on it as well. And to be honest, they are a really nice part of the kit. Okay, so I'm going to try and be clever here and do both together whilst holding and cutting. So actually what you can do, you can remove these from the sprue. And as I say, another thing, using scissors means I can get in nice and close. Okay, and just hoof these off. So, now I'm hoping we can, you can let go and it holds. Okay, so we just do a little bit of cleanup just to show you on here. So these are the nice straightforward. You're just taking the tab off. Don't try and reduce the height at all. Otherwise you're gonna make a gap around the back. But uh, you can go down, because I did it a little bit rough as we were holding. Okay, and on this guy. Now the easiest way I found these, if you get your glue, okay, put it in first, a little bit up over the back. Okay, grab your lower part. Now there is ejector pin marks in these, but I don't think anyone's gonna notice. Okay, they're too far down, too deep and everything else. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue around the front end. Remember the little nodule at the bottom goes uh, to the bottom, okay. So you're looking for it, this one's the other side. So on this one, you've got a little bit of a nodule that's gonna stick out and then he is gonna come in and pushes in, a little bit of a nub. Actually this one, say this particular one, for some reason fought me that all the others have gone down there. Plenty of glue, because we're gonna weld up, do a little bit of sanding just to blend all these in to make sure you've got good glue down there, okay. And this one up here, it's actually risen a little bit of a gap, which we'll take care of in a second. So a little bit of glue down the back. Locating tab for the top part. So really what you're doing is putting it in all as a sort of loose fit before you get in there and try and put all this in, okay? So we're just gonna stick this down. He goes on top and then it pushes in. This one over here, we're just gonna give a little bit more of a push and we'll hold and then glue, leading and bottom all in, just going to give us a drop more glue just down the bottom here. Hold that there just for a moment and done. But as you can see on the others, they're all pretty nice fits on all of these. Haven't really got a problem with any of them. So with those areas all done now, we can actually come along in a moment and put the bottoms of the wings on. So we've got another five to do. We'll get them done and then we can get the bottom, bottoms fitted to this and then we can work on those diesel tanks, let them all dry off, have a look around for any filler problems and things like that and we can really start pushing on. <laughs> 